Welcome to the channel. Today we are taking a look at every tank, every fish, hopefully every fish, if they'll comply, I don't know, uh, that I currently have in my little garage fish room here. And uh, so yeah, sit back and this might be one of my longer videos I've made in a while, we'll see. Not really sure where this is gonna go, but I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you at the end. So we are gonna start with the Chilatherina fasciata, which these guys are amazing rainbow fish. Uh, it's really hard to pick up their color on film. If you see this male right here, he's kind of got that blue sheen to him. And these are not adults, so they still got a lot of growing to do and coloring up. But they get this really nice blue. And of course, he wants to look at it straight on. You can kind of see it on the camera, but in person, it looks way better. They get a pretty decent size. They're not too timid. And they get that blue like I'm talking about. I wish the camera could pick that up on this guy. It's like a blue that I've never seen on a rainbow fish before. You know, there's the turquoise, the kamakas, and uh, it's just completely different. It's like a pastel, kind of bright blue. I don't know, hard to explain, but I really love these guys. It's gonna be hard to let them go. They've been doing so well for me. I've had them for, oh man, probably two months now. Next up, we have these botillas here. You can see them kind of scooting around in the back. Probably going to be hard to focus on them here. Problem is, is I moved this up to the front of the tank, hoping that they would stay in there so it'd be easier to film them. And that was a big fail. It did not work. So they're a little bit shy, but they're still fairly new, getting used to their uh, temporary tank here. Just a quarantine tank and obviously a holding tank. And I feel like I should point that out as we go through and look at these tanks. Just, uh, you know, remember these are not show tanks these are not hobbyist tanks these tanks are for holding only so the resale operation so oh, we almost got a good shot on there there's not a lot of light on this tank so it's hard to focus on them when they're in the back there we go a little bit really cool loach though first time i've ever seen them in person they do love to go in here and hide though so if you end up with some of these guys, make sure you give them hides. It doesn't help that there's no dither fish. Maybe if there's dither fish in here, they'd come out more. But uh, yeah, they love they love hiding. So give them tubes, give them something like this. Pretty cool uh, loach that you don't see very often. Here we have all the German blue rams. I don't even know how many there are in here. Of course, there's also the reed tetras. It's kind of schooling around on top, but tons and tons of gold rams, not gold rams, uh, blue rams in here. Nice big male right there. Uh, another nice big male over there. Really good size on these guys. There's a, what I'm guessing to be a little female. Hard to know for sure though, unless they're uh, you know big like this guy right here. This guy's a beautiful fish. Speaking of gold rams, I did get gold rams in once and they did absolutely terrible. So. I've been a little nervous about getting them in again. I'll probably try once the weather warms up though, but for some reason they were just not good shippers, whereas the Blue Rams here, I've uh, ordered many times and never had an issue, even uh, even in the colder weather. Kinda got that little orange face on them. They're just a beautiful fish. So next up, might have to uh, change to a macro adapter here for these guys. Doesn't wanna focus, but this is the Santa Maria Endlers. There's also chocolate cherry shrimp down here. And if you look right there, you can see like right over here, where am I at, right here? 
I already have fry. There's a ton of fry. Here's a little dude right down here of these uh, Santa Maria Endlers. I'm super happy with these guys. They came in absolutely beautiful. Uh, I think I only lost one female. Uh, pulled her out in the water change a couple days ago, unfortunately, but otherwise, no issues, knock on wood, with these guys at all. I just really love the black bar across the top and then the red bellies. There's also, looks like a clown killie back there. There's probably a few clown killies in here. The clown killies are spread out over three different tanks, so. My original plan was to have all these 10 gallons be like the quarantine and then I'll move them. But now I pretty much just quarantine every single tank when they come in, so. Yeah, anyways. I don't know why I just went on that little rant, but Santa Maria Endlers are pretty dang awesome, doing amazing, and I already have fry, so how can I complain? Next up, we're gonna go to this rainbow tank here, and I know what you're thinking, these rainbows are huge for a 10 gallon tank, uh, but they just don't stay healthy. I've had, uh, I actually got these, this is one of the first shipments I ever got in were these Glossolepis Wanamenses, and then the door, the door tie rainbows, which are these ones right here. And they only stay healthy for like a week and then they have problems again. Uh, the other problem with these guys is that they're pretty big, um, almost too big to ship. Rainbows, they kind of, uh, they're, they're not great shippers at the larger size here. You have to do like one per bag, otherwise they get beat up. This guy right here actually had a broken jaw or something with his jaw when he came in hard to tell now it's kind of healed up but yeah I haven't lost a single one but they just they get these uh, lesions on them on their fins so they're kind of at the healthy state right now but uh, you know give this another week and they'll be looking sickly again so I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with these guys uh, you know might throw them out in the pond over the summer I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do with them I don't trust them to put with other fish though or to sell them you can see, you kind of saw it with this guy here, the bump. If you go back and rewind that and pause it, you can see he's got uh, towards the tail end of him. It almost looks like it was broken at some point and then healed. I don't know. Just something off with these fish. And so, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Moving on over to the next tank, we got the Rosie Tetras Peacock Gudgeons. They stay in the back there. And then long, thin, green dragons are everywhere in here. They're just little guys though, and they are from a Greg Sage line, so that's pretty cool. Here comes a peacock gudgeon right here. I'd say there's probably about 20 of them in here. Now they're starting to, they get a little skittish at first, but there we go, you can see one there. Actually, I really love these Tetras. Um, they did sell, we're just waiting on good weather, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be sad to see them go. They're pretty cool little fish. Maybe I'll get more. I don't know. Tetras don't do well for me, though. I mean, I wish we could come down here and get a good shot. There is one of the green dragons there. And not the best zoom capabilities here, but there's a ton of them. There's probably maybe 15 long fin green dragons. There's a nice one right there. Come on. A couple of them right there. Uh, every water change, I pull another couple out and move them to a different tank. And I'll show you why later or where they go. Uh, next to them, we have the Makolachai rainbows, which are pretty dang sweet. This is a smaller species of rainbow. These are full grown. And they have the nice little red stripes, red fins. Pretty neat rainbow fish. Absolutely love these guys. I've been keeping these guys for a couple years. I have videos on them uh, from quite a while ago. So, oh, of course, I mean, they're rainbow fish. Of course I love them. What are we talking about here? Not much to say about them. Uh, pretty plain tank. I need to get some uh, guppy grass in there for them. Slowly spreading that out, as you can see, as it grows over here. I kind of, kind of a, uh, a a theme of my tanks, right? Guppy grass, guppy grass, guppy grass. I love guppy grass. It's so easy to work with. Uh, it's easy to pull out too when I have to net these fish. But here are the mosaic Dumbo ear guppies, and I'm really short on males. So there's a male right there that you can see. The females look absolutely fantastic. Uh, what is this, general cure? Yep. And then there's just a few of the orange Corydoras in here. Oh, here's one over here. I think there's actually only two, maybe three left. 
Those actually sold pretty quick, I'm kind of surprised. Well, not really, corridors are awesome. So my problem with these guys and a lot of my guppies and endlers is that I always end up with primarily females. It's really troublesome. So yeah, there's a lot of fish in here, but I only have one male. So if you go to my website and it says they're sold out, that's why. There's the other male. So I have two males in here. So I can't really sell like three pairs of these guys. Uh, I can't even sell one pair. I, can't, I just can't get rid of my males. They don't uh, live as long as the females. And you know, I just gotta make sure that they're doing their job in here. I'll also probably end up getting a fry catcher in here because uh, I really need to make sure the fry survive. Just cause I need more males. I don't know what the deal is with these guys, but primarily females. So coming down to the last bottom row here, well the last on this wall anyways, we still got a lot more tanks to look at. These are going to be where the freshwater blennies, uh, freshwater blennies, they are definitely not freshwater blennies. They're, this is a brackish tank now, there is salt in here. And uh, I, had, I started with six, there's one pair left and I finally got them eating. Of course, seaweed, they love the seaweed salad. Uh, who, I don't even know who makes this. Sally's. Sally's seaweed salad. Sally's seaweed salad. What? I don't know. But uh, I'm not gonna bother. I'm not gonna bother them. Uh, I'll do a follow-up video on these guys and and get them on film again. Like I said, they're just one pair left, and they hang out right back under that shell. They're very shy. They hardly ever come out. Um, even to feed, they won't come out unless I leave. So, so I'll probably never bring these guys back in. Uh, even special order. It's uh, it's uh, it, it, you know I lose a tank because it's brackish. So that's unfortunate. I don't know what I'm going to do with this pair. Maybe sell them off. Maybe set up a tank inside for them. I'm not sure. I do miss my dragon goby. So setting up a brackish tank with uh, some blennies and some gobies. It might be kind of fun. I don't know. Eh, I got some time to figure it out. Here there's just a couple of yellow rainbow fish. These are already sold. Uh, again, just waiting on weather. Pretty, pretty young though. So uh, this is a male right here. And that's the only one that I can sex at this point, as they're still pretty small. Also got in a mono shrimp down there under the sponge, but... Yep, so this is where the yellow rainbows normally live. Uh, I should be getting some more in next week or the week after, depending on weather. So that should be pretty cool. Next to that, we got some more rainbow fish. And one of my favorites, the Trifasciata Blythe River. The Blythe River Rainbows, you can see these on my website. If you want to know what these guys look like colored up, go check out my website. They're the uh, thumbnail or the uh, the picture for them. Uh, we'll show you their color. And even that's not colored all the way up. That was just the most colorful one I had. And then there's these uh, uh, Rasboras in here as well. So we're going to come back up to the Endler tank in here because there's also Auto Sinkless in here. And there's so it's going to be hard to sell. There's a Corridora Pygmaeus. There is an auto sync list, but what I want to show everyone, and I'm gonna make everyone angry, is the L09 Pleco. Just a cool little striped Pleco. Oh, there he goes. Let's see, okay, here we got one coming into the front here. Right there. I believe these guys to be full grown. They're black with the brown stripes. They stay small, super durable. And uh, it's hard to get them on picture. Oh, there's an auto sink list right there, right in front of my face. For some reason, this tank, the auto sink list do really well. So they always go in this tank, which is weird because there's like zero algae in this tank, but whatever they like it. So there's the L09s. Um, we didn't really get a good look, but I don't want to stress them out too much. They don't, uh, they don't like the camera. So next up, we're going to take a look at this wall here. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tanks. These are all 10 gallons, kind of with the same thing from the other side. Here we have a coolie loach, just chilling, hanging out. Uh, what else is there in here? I don't even know. There's some Corridora pygmaeus in here as well. Oh, the ember tetras are in here, but of course they're all hiding in the back. I don't know that I'll be bringing in more coolie loaches ever because they're a pain to catch. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's real frustrating to catch coolie loaches. And they always come in like random species. So 
it's hard to uh, guarantee what species I'll get. Same with the uh, uh, hill stream loach. They always come in uh, as, as a different species. But uh, actually, this tank, uh, not a lot going on in this tank. I see a couple amber tetras in the back there, but let's just move on. There's not a lot going on here. And here, we're gonna have the neon green rasboras. One of my, if not the favorite rasbora. And that might be all that's in here. There's there's some clown killies in here, a couple clown killies, but this is mainly my neon green rasbora tank. And boy, there's just not a lot of light. Let's move it back there. Too many floating plants is blocking out all the light. There, uh. You can kind of see him. I don't know. This is like really low light. Oh, I see a neon blue rasbora back there. <laughs> One random neon blue. That happens a lot. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, there's two neon blues in there. Or, yeah, there's two of them. All right. Anyways, neon green rasboras. Super cool. Let's move on. I have a video dedicated to both of those uh, rasboras. So, if you want to go check it out, it's on my channel. Here we're going to take a look at Jurupari. Uh, there's about six of them in here and they love me. <laughs> no, they don't. They just love being fed. Here is an L52 butterfly pleco that's absolutely huge. There's another one in the back corner that you can't see really, but right there. The other one um, is way more yellow than this one. So I don't know, maybe male, female type of thing, but these guys are huge, about five inches. Still really beautiful markings on this guy. Um, the, the lighting I'm using on here um, is just the Walmart $16 shop light and then I just have a bunch of random tops sitting on here that still have like the covering on there as you can see I haven't peeled it off yet so uh, I've been using this little light to try to help but it's not very bright not to mention floating plants on every single one of these tanks so all right took the tops off I'm gonna throw this light on here so hopefully we can see some of these strawberry rasboras. No, still really dark. You can see the panagars in the back. Little strawberry rasbora right there. But yeah, they're all hanging back by the sponge filter. This was a pretty big fail. Really nice uh, snail right here. Pretty cool markings. There we go. Pretty sweet little uh, Malaysian trumpet snail there. All right, so more fish we can't see. I will guarantee you're gonna be able to see this next rasbora. These guys are one of my favorites. Uh, so there's a big harlequin rasbora in there, maybe two, but this tank is emerald eye rasboras. And even though it's dark, it makes it better because of the emerald eye. Like you really get that shine from their eye. They hit that light right and they just look absolutely amazing. Really cool. Uh, very underrated rasbora, which is it's just a silver fish with a black fin and and the uh, spot on the eye But they're pretty cool kind of like the Norman's lamp eye killie. I really enjoy these guys And I hope they never sell to be honest All right, so those are the 10 gallons down there. We're gonna move up to the 20 gallons uh, 320 gallon tanks here and my Sony camera overheated So we're going with the GoPro now but anyway, so this is the Brilliant Rasbora and then the Goiter River Rainbows, quickly becoming some of my favorite rainbows. Again, like most rainbows, the cameras just don't do them justice. This is sometimes called the banded rainbow or the three-striped, three-banded rainbow. But uh, they have some really, really red, orange markings. And of course, I really like the black bar, the black lateral bar. I don't know why, but uh, I do. I think it looks good. This tank definitely is going to be getting some of those bushy nose plecos as well. But anyways, the Brilliant Rasbora is also very, very underrated. Uh, this is a great Rasbora. They're a little larger than other Rasboras that you see in the hobby. And they're really, really, really active, really good schoolers. And uh, the more you can buy of these guys, the, be the better. You know, whether you're buying from me or not, it doesn't matter. I don't even have that many left. Maybe, maybe 10, maybe a dozen. But anyways... Goiter River Rainbow Fish. Super awesome. Coming over, we have a couple different rainbow fishes in here. And I'm just going to move this light a little bit. So there's the Madagascar Rainbow that you see right there. Uh, also, some Koi Angel Fish. And then Parkinsoni Rainbow Fish in the back there. 
Oh, kind of in the middle. I don't like when I move the light around, but I am trying to make you guys look better. So Parkinson Rainbow, Madagascar Rainbow, three koi angelfish that I'm gonna try to sell locally for really, really cheap. I don't know, maybe like five bucks. They're pretty good size. Um, let's take a look, see, look at that. It's pretty good size. Probably like three inches tall-ish. So yeah, I don't wanna ship them, uh, angelfish. I don't know, I just don't like shipping them when they're, uh, when they're this big. So next up, we're gonna look at the Blaheri rainbows. There's a few skunk corridors left over, probably just two or three, uh, but the Blaheri rainbows here, these guys are a very active, very active rainbow fish. They're just now starting to get their color. This is another one that I've had for, I don't know, a month and a half, two months. One of the acquisitions before the winter hit and uh, they've just been doing really really well for me no issues at all again knock on wood but uh man i love these guys it's hard for me to uh sell rainbow fish i don't know i just i don't want any, any of them to sell uh, i got some beautiful turquoise rainbows that we'll go take a look at and uh they recently sold so i'm kind of sad about that but uh they're right here i guess i can just lean over again another walmart light so not not too much light on these tanks but you can see these turquoise rainbows they're young and they already have fantastic color um especially in the morning so they're not very uh flared up right now not really not really fired up but uh there's also praycox rainbows in here primarily females i know a lot of people want these fish but i think every single one in here oh there's a male right there so i got one male I think when I was did my last water change in here, I found two that I could confirm to be males, but there's probably 20 to 25 in here and they're mainly females. So that's kind of rough. Again, we have a big clump of guppy grass, my favorite. And now we'll move down here and check out these endlers slash guppies. So these guys here, um, I, I got rid of most of them and the fry have grown up and i have males and females again the problem is is that they're two different fish so like this guy oh i lost him anyway so this is a there's endlers in here like japanese uh swordtail endlers something like that and then uh blue like liar tail guppies and i mistakenly put them in the same tank and they interbred and now we've got like this hodgepodge so these are all going to be going in just my random guppy tank that has i don't know some whites some blacks some uh some red deltas so yeah there's nothing I, I can't sell them because they're not you know one species they're interbred so they look absolutely beautiful though especially this guy right here look at that guy that guy is stunning this guy is smaller so he doesn't have as long as uh fins but he looks pretty dang sweet but yeah i'll probably oops i was holding that off to the side uh, i'll probably keep these in their own tank now that i'm thinking about it and just continue to let them breed and see what happens i don't know next up we have a green water tank and you know i love green water can't really see anything but this is my danio tank there's rosy danios in here also uh gold white clouds but uh, there is Daniel Kaithit and Rosie Daniels in here. Super active, hard to see them. <laughs> and again, guppy grass. I'm telling you, guppy grass and green water grows amazing. This is this right here is the best guppy grass in my fish room. It is the brightest. It is the greenest. And I'm thinking it's the green water. But you know, what do I know? Hard to see the fish though, hard to catch, even harder to catch them when you can't see them. But it's totally worth it because I love green water. So there's not really anything in here. Well, there's two fish in here. So we have a rainbow fish cruising around down here, just hanging out. This is a Millennium Red. And then you probably can't see it, but there's one Reckford, uh, Reckford, Red Beckford pencil fish back there. And that's it. I've been waiting for these fish to come back in again and uh, just haven't seen them available. So. They'll, they'll uh, be buddies until I can get them more buddies, I guess. Next to that, we have 
the um, the Rainbow Tiger Endlers. This is an LR Brett's line of Rainbow Tiger Endlers. And as you can see, there's just a ton of them. Also in here is the orange cherry shrimp. And unfortunately, they look more yellow because of the green floating plants. So the light comes through and it makes them look more yellow, but they are orange. I don't know how they're gonna come out when I go to edit this later, but I guarantee you they are orange. But <laughs> so many fry. So many fry, so many fish, endlers doing endler things, of course. Go down here was a tank that was empty for a very, very long time. And it got overgrown with algae and snails. And I recently um, got these chain loaches, dwarf chain loaches in here to help with the snail problem. And then I'll just have to uh, put this tank on my water change schedule to start getting rid of some of that algae. But yeah. I, uh, you know, I just never did out water changes in here because there was no fish in here and, you know, I'm already short for time. Next up we have the green lime or the lime green endlers and then more chocolate cherry shrimp. Again, like the uh, mosaic, uh, there's, there's my last male, my only male, but, it, but like I was saying, my mosaic gumbies that were all, uh, gumbies, <laughs> guppies that were all male, Sarah, so oh my gosh, I'm just going to start over. And then next to that, we have the lime green endlers. And like the mosaic guppies, I only get females out of them. This is my one and only male. I recently had somebody buy um, a three pack, three pairs, and I just, I couldn't get rid of my last male. I needed the male. But I did include a, a bunch of extra fry, extra female. So hopefully they're happy. I haven't heard anything, but I hope they're happy. So yeah, this is uh, where the lime green endlers live and hopefully I'll start getting some females, or, or males, not females, too many females, I need males. Next up, we'll go to a 40 gallon planted tank down here that is looking pretty ratty. There's nothing in the here except for these tequila goodies. There is nothing but a trio of tequila goodies in here. I'm hoping they'll spawn and so I'm just letting everything just do whatever it does. The algae, the plants, whatever and uh this tank stays a little bit cooler because it's on the bottom which the goodie it's like and it'd be nice if we could see the male there's the other female but i'm not seeing the male of course it's the male that has all the color oh here's the male up here has those nice orange fins beautiful fish love these guys i'm really getting into goodie lately again i used to keep a few species years and years ago and i'm slowly starting to collect some more species so the last tank that we're going to look at today is going to be the Sicuenses, Melanotania Sicuenses. And this is some pretty brown stained water, uh, as of course I've got guppy grass in there. But if we look at the surface here, I bought a pound of red root floaters and they are all slowly dying off and all those dying organics are tanning the water. So that's why it's a little brown in here. But this is a pretty rare rainbow fish that's uh, becoming a little bit more common if you really have to look for it though. But this is a, a pretty rare rainbow fish that's starting to become more common, but you really have to look for it if you want it. And there's 35 of them in here. They will get a really, really nice yellow. Not like the Herbert Axel Rod Eye, but it's a, it's a completely different yellow and they just look really, really good as adults. There's a couple of Agassiz Icoris in here too, the leftover. But I'm so excited, so happy to get this fish. I also have Melanotania laticlavia coming in, which is another really rare rainbow fish that was just described, uh, I wanna say in 2014 or 2015. So just five years ago was this uh, species just described. I'm getting them next week. All right guys, so that's gonna do it. That is every tank in the fish room. Currently it has two walls. I have one more wall to go. Once that wall is done, then we'll do like a complete tour of everything and you'll see how that, what everything looks like in the room heating water changes feeding like the, the full meal deal once that wall is complete right now like i said it's just two walls a couple tens couple 20s couple 17s like these acrylic ones that i'm actually getting rid of as soon as i have enough 20 gallon tanks hopefully i can make that happen before the dollar per gallon sale is over i'll be swapping all of these out at once so i'm slowly been collecting them they're piling up in the garage and it's almost time to do that so that's what's coming up in the near future. 
swapping out all these, getting that last wall done. Uh, if you want any of these fish, just go check out uh, steampotaquatics.com. If there's fish here that you saw that are not on the website, which is a lot of them, which is a lot, I'm not gonna lie, uh, just email me at steampotaquatics at gmail.com. As long as the weather is okay, we can probably work something out. Uh, it's gonna be snowing for me this week, so I'm not shipping this week. Next week is looking even colder, but no snow, so we're kind of in that winter, winter holding pattern, I guess. But uh, don't forget to leave a like. I hope you liked the video, and I'll see you all next time.